Hey Libra, welcome to Eight of Cups Tarot and welcome to your second half of March. Now, when I told you that the energy was going to drastically change mid-month, I hope you understand that this is exactly what I meant. Um, time is stressful right now. And in some ways, I feel like time is moving really slowly. And then in some ways, I think it's moving too quickly for us to even get a grip. You know, it's like you learn news at such a rapid rate and your mind is constantly changing and it's leaving you in this state of confusion. And that's what Neptune does to us. And especially when it involves the media. And so I really want to explain to everyone that there really has to be a balance right now between the exasperated fears that the media is portraying and leaning on your intuition to protect you and your faith to protect you. Now, I don't ever want anyone to think that I'm saying don't seek medical attention, you know, just ignore it and have faith in God. By gosh, absolutely not. But, um, you know, as we're moving through a territory we've never been through and we've never been through crises at a time when the president can address this many people at once this often um that our, our my phone is going off every two seconds with alerts and changing laws and new rules and it just feels like there's no getting away from the reality of the crisis that we're in and that could wear you down and it could make you sad and um, the worst thing that can happen to humanity or to anyone on an individual level, the lowest form of the human experience is hopelessness. So you have to remember that it's even better to be angry. It's even better to be sad and defeated because hopeless is giving up. That's the final step. And we have to keep our head above the water at this time. And we have to do things crucial to our health at this time, crucial in making the decisions to protect yourself, to be responsible, to exercise a form of compassion for others. Um, and becoming really responsible with your energy. Um, we're starting to see how we truly are all connected. And at times like this, unfortunately, a virus is a pretty genius way to show the ripple effect of our energy, of our presence on others. And so I urge everyone to heed the advice to shelter as much as you can and protect yourself and take the time that's being given to you now as a time to seek faith in the higher perspective. What we can learn from this experience, um, we're setting new foundations and learning how to protect ourselves in new territory in our own personal lives. <clears throat> and this time might be crucial for you to do a little bit of cleansing and purging. I feel like this is the time when things are coming from our subconscious level. We're acting out of very primal energies, and that's what fear can do to you. And as Jupiter gets closer and closer to Pluto, exaggerated measures have to be taken place. Um, there's a need to really distance yourself or really protect yourself from situations. And so this energy, you see it, it's being interpreted so well collectively, but there's a mirror in our own personal life of the same exact situation playing out. And that's what's happening with you, Libra. Now, we're at the final phases of this conjunction now. I do not mean it's coming to an end. You are going to feel the energy of this conjunction that Saturn-Pluto conjunction for a long time yet, at least all of 2020. And 
in a lot of ways, everything from that point on changes. It's just a turning point. And so that plays out for the next 40 years as we rebuild and restructure. But this is your fourth house. It's the deepest of your foundations. It's your soul. It's your karma. It's what you're meant to work through in this lifetime. And this is such a sensitive area because it's about family. It's about blood, um, blood relatives and our parents. And it's very emotional. It's our home where we feel, where we think. Um, and Saturn is leaving that fourth house and it's moving into fifth. And this is a time in which we look at this transition and Saturn says, okay, you've met some real emotional depth here and the amount of growth has been tremendous. And let's take this growth and let's invest it into the next thing. And I sense that a lot of things were lost during this transition. Um, and now there's the empty space and God willing, the strength and the perseverance to go beyond that loss and see the creativity that can be brought from it. Um, there's something here that's meant to be achieved from the loss. Um, and then you have the north nodes that are just getting ready to move from your 10th house to your 9th house. So again, we're looking at the other axis. We're looking at your 10th house being your career, your status in this world, um, and then it's it's going to shore up anything that needs to be perfected in that area. There's a month and a half left of that energy and it moves very slowly. That is why it feels like time is moving very slowly. Because the nodes slow down and it's like we're slowing down. We're at our destiny. We could see it in front of us, that new dream, that new thing that we want to start. It's right there but we're not quite ready yet. Something's holding us back. Some things need to be healed. Um, and pretty significantly, as the sun moves into your seventh house, into Aries, the house of partnerships, um, business partners, these are committed relationships, the idea of commitment itself, contracts, um, binding agreements. And it's going to move into this house and illuminate a lot of information for you. And so if you're in a period in which you feel like you need to conserve your energy, Venus and Uranus in your eighth house can be jarring. It could be a little bit like a roller coaster ride. And, you know, not one of the new ones, like one of the the wooden ones. It's, it's a... It's kind of an awkward energy. Venus and Uranus together is very much awkward but appealing. Um, and that's going on in your eighth house. Something's breaking you open on an intimate level. Um, and it's sudden endings and sudden new beginnings. Uh, sudden new passion and drive that comes from sometimes an ending or a loss. Getting into your cards... Um, we have the card of lust and the queen of swords. <clears throat> this is very much the energy in which we're harnessing a passion and a drive towards something. But we have to do it in a disciplined manner. You know, the Queen of Swords, that is discernment. That's the ability to cut out what isn't needed. The ability to have the mature conversations. Um, it's somebody who sees a vision and is ready to move forward. Um, and right now she's attracting all of the pieces that she needs to her. Um, and then the Page of Swords comes out in reverse.
with the four of cups <coughs> oh my god i'm sorry and i feel like worse because i don't want to cough in public right now it's just a tickle in my throat sorry about that okay so the page of swords is quite honestly where communication isn't taking place. Uh, something needs to be said. Someone needs to talk. And because of a lack in communication, it invites in a level of complacency. And I feel this like in a relationship where, well, if you're not going to bring up the elephant in the room, I'm not going to bring up the elephant in the room. And let's just see how long this could last. You know, maybe there's a, you know, because a page of swords can be very immature. And so it's like there's a lack of wanting to address the real issues here and kind of hoping that they're just out of sight, out of mind. Everything can go on as normal. But it's not, and it won't, and you can't. Right? You can't. I think you know that we're at a time in which things are just sort of happening. It's almost as if the universe is taking over. Uh, we're, we're getting less and less able to live our normal lives. Um, we're maybe at a, a time in our lives where we feel really out of control. We feel like we don't have the willpower and this is where the release of the illusion of free will comes in real handy. Because if you could believe in the faith in the universe and relinquish the need to control all of the outcomes, then you would see that the universe is trying to give you something much better than you even imagined in the first place. But it can't give it to you because you're not willing to take that final leap of faith. And so Chiron comes in with the new moon conjunct in Aries, which is the beginning of an astrological new year and the real new beginning at the time of the spring equinox. And if you are willing to take that leap of faith, the universe is going to carry you into a direction you didn't even know was possible. Look at all that potential. And you don't even know that you're headed for it. You don't even know that you are already looking right at it. And it's funny that I say that because your Oracle card was exactly that. You're already doing it. Whatever this big change is, whatever this thriving in spite of our losses, I feel a sense that Libra's kind of licking their pause a little bit and just kind of recovering from something um something that had to happen to rebalance the scales but crossing this four of wands this stability this habit this happiness this uh coming together unity <coughs> card of engagement, card of proposals, card of marriage, um, and even, you know, business partnerships. So if it's not love related, if it is in the career front, again, you are also going through tremendous career aspects as well. Um, but crowning this is the Knight of Wands. And my Knight of Wands in reverse is probably the most undependable person in the deck. My Knight of Wands in reverse is, um, it is my player card. And so I'm wondering if you're not getting a real good lesson in the power of your thoughts at this time, because coming out next to this Knight of Wands in reverse, next to the strength in reverse, I'm sensing that the more you try to force a situation or force an answer, um, the, 
the more control the universe is going to take from you. And this is a real game because what you don't understand is you've already planted the seeds. It's already happening. You did this already. And that there's no decision to be made. Okay, there's no struggling, no need to get lost in that eternal conflict and struggle in your mind that you can have some time. Because again, that free will is sort of an illusion. Um, and I think whatever's going on, you're feeling like it's awfully risky and that you know that you have to do it now. There's a sense of urgency with that Knight of Wands in reverse. And you see, I don't see it so much as that player card energy. Um, I feel like the Page of Swords is kind of graduating into a Knight of Wands. And eventually will go all the way as far as to becoming the Magician knowing how to use their energy to attract and create everything they've ever wanted. Um, but there's potential that this situation can bring such an abundance of spiritual wisdom on all levels and a balancing of your ability to go after life with, you know, mind, body, and soul, the physical strength, the intellect, and the real heart, you know, that's what it takes to create dreams. And this is all about manifestation, and you're going to be tested over the next two weeks, little by little, on how flexible Libra is willing to be. And I feel like you have two choices. Whatever situation that's being, I kind of feel like just sat in your lap, you know, here it is now the universe says, let's see if you could figure this out. If you could get yourself out of this, you get to move on to the next level. If not, we can keep doing this all day long, right? That's generally karma, but we're breaking karmic cycles and these things are really big and they're really exciting. Um, and. And so you're being given a choice to operate from one or two of these places. Um, there's a lizard. You know, we've all heard of the lizard brain. This is someone who really operates out of fear, out of a page of swords in reverse, you know? Somebody that is making decisions based on worst case scenarios and all of the things that you can cook up in your head that could possibly go wrong. How these people could hurt me, how these people can disappoint me. Or you can go at it like the bear. And there's a strength in the bear. There's a strength in the bear, but the bear doesn't have to show its ego. And there's a quietness about the bear. I think it's like the awakening of the bear from its slumber, from its hibernation, and wiping the sleep from its eyes and realizing that it's very much time to move, time to forge ahead, time to get the supplies to build the nest, to get ready to start the new things, the new things that bears do in the springtime. And the Acacia Tarot cards, um, these I would like to read to you because I think they might speak to you more on a much more individual level. Um, but the energy here is quite magnificent in the fact that I think you're just starting to learn your own power, your own manifesting power, and how crucial it is that you choose the bear this month, that you are smart and slow and methodical, but you know your power and you know that if you need If you need to power through, you can. 
but you could also just rely on your instinct to get you through the situation. Okay. Five of forces in the upright. The summer winter card. This is a beautiful energy in the upright, I think, because I'm a summer person. Um, Libra, you might feel differently. You're kind of fallish, but let's see. This seasonal cycle card reveals how best to spend your energy at this time. The beautiful sunlit sky of summer overlooks farmers working hard on their growing crops. Summer, a yang time of great activity. So this is your notice to get going. Action is as important is an important part of this cycle and it can take many forms. There may be something you can do to accelerate your professional life. This may also be the perfect time to take steps towards your personal goals. Perhaps get more exercise, plan more social events, or start a fun activity you've been wanting to do. Ixnay on the social events right now though, guys. You might also reflect on what actions or perspective would attract a new romance or enhance your love life. This card tells you to consider what needs to be done and then go for it. This cycle is a perfect time to create a smiling, self-loving energy and project it outward for the world to see. Also, don't be surprised if a trip is coming your way. Ixnay on the travel, guys. This card implies movement of some kind, so get ready. I know, look at it, it's even dampening my tarot reads. So funny, it's not funny though. But sometimes you have to laugh at stuff because if not, you know, well, I'll be suicidal. Laughter is really healing. Okay, so then the Buddha prepares, but in reverse. And when I first saw this, I was like, oh, oh no, they're like missing a lesson. But in reverse, it's actually really good because it's right along the lines of that first card. The Buddha leaves a state of preparation behind him, easily and happily moving into the crowd. This reversal indicates that a period of waiting and planning has come to an end. The time for action is now. If you feel hesitant and slow to move, don't hold yourself back. Indeed, because of your inner work and preparation, you may find yourself able to influence others without knowing how it happens. So move with certainty and courage. It's no longer time to wait. The world is ready and you are ready too. Isn't that powerful? I mean, Libra, it's Aries season, your seventh house. It's go time. And I really think that's that bare energy, the waking up out of a slumber, knowing it's time to move. And I have to just point out really quickly before I read this last one, um, just look at the women in these cards, okay? Oh, if I could pick them up, that'd be great. Just, just look for a minute. Like, is there not just a level of complete and utter satisfaction? <laughs> I mean, I'm just pointing it out there. Um, yeah. Something's waking you up, Libra. <laughs> Good morning. Okay, and then you got the Increscent Moon in reverse, Six of Keys. Let me show you the card. This reversal shows that a phase of decrease is here. The moon is waning, the tides are ebbing away. Energy, money, and even your creative flow may feel tight for a while. The forces around you seem prohibitive, so conserve your energy rather than spend it in futile action. Though this seems like a difficult time, don't be dismayed. It's not permanent. The moon, like all things, moves in cycles, and quickly too. So take a deep breath, 
rest and know that the time of increase will soon return. So this is probably pretty legit for all of us right now as things continue to shut down and we're closed off from other people um, having to work in different ways. Some of us aren't working at all. Um, there's a lot of change there and probably the feeling like, you know, Saturn moving into Aquarius, I also think it becomes a narrowing of the options in a way. Um, I think it's about becoming really aware of how you spend your time and how you prioritize things in your life. And that having to focus on just one or two of the main things may actually be somewhat therapeutic um, and give us the ability to solve and heal some things that have been festering for far too long and causing blocks in our abundance. So it's a really good time for all of us. Um, and you know, Libra, this kind of felt like a collective message. Um, not taking away from all of my Libras, but I think that a lot of these messages in this reading can be a good lesson for all of us at this time. All right, well, it is very good to spend this time with you, Libra, and um, things are changing. I'm really looking forward to your April reading that'll be coming out soon. Until then, take care of yourself. Lots of love. Bye.